As the world grapples with the reality of COVID-19, Nigeria, like other nations of the world, is looking up to her leaders for answers and solutions. The biggest threats to Nigeria managing COVID-19, some have argued, could be the choices we make as a people and the decisions that leaders take. Beyond COVID-19, what would our leadership and policy evolve to? Joining us via Skype to bundle this is Executive Director, Open Society Initiative for West Africa, Aisha Osori. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. All right. Considering the fight against COVID-19, many are querying whether Nigeria has adopted the right tailor-made approach to tackling uh, the virus. What do you think? Thank you. I mean, the short answer is not yet, uh, that we're still evolving in our response, in the right response that will be, as you say, tailor-made for our environment and for our circumstances. That's the short answer. The long answer is that while we've seen some pockets of um, the right response within the NCDC, Lagos, and maybe FCT as well, the truth is that we're still experimenting, and this is not ideal because it means that we're not learning from other countries that have successfully managed this pandemic. So, for example, we've heard, we're beginning to hear more stridently and loudly, including from places like India, which have a much larger population than ours, but also have a similar economy in the sense that the majority of the people, some say between 65% to 80%, of our population and our GDP are based on the informal sector. So now what does that mean? It means that most people are earning daily. And so following the, the advisory of European countries and the US where we are locking down and restricting movement means that we're basically submitting the larger part of our population to hunger, which is why we're beginning to see a lot of insecurity uh, happening in places like Lagos. And it's quite likely that this will spread as the virus spreads. So no, we, we, we actually need to rethink. Uh, and the last conversation that we had, the communication we had with the president on the 13th would have been an opportunity to show that the presidential task force had learned something from the previous two weeks and was ready to adapt. So for example, what people are saying is that maybe we shouldn't have this type of lockdown. Maybe we should continue to restrict large gatherings such as what we see with mosques on Friday or churches on Sundays, maybe we should continue to restrict weddings and things like that and funerals where we see large people gathering. But at the same time, we should be able to allow people to continue with their daily, um, daily activities. So what we see in, of course, smaller countries like Senegal is that during the day, what, what they said, the advisory was, if you can work from home, please work from home. But obviously, if you need to be out and about, do so. But where um, take a uh, take precaution and follow the health advisory to keep a safe distance from each other. People say 1.5 meters, wear masks. Many public places have hand sanitizers, have um, hand washing stations. And then the curfew is imposed in the evening so that it, in a way it sort of limits unnecessary movement while giving the balance that during the day people have to go about their lawful activities in order to, to make a living. And that's why in, in effect they've been able to have fairly peaceful from now, apart from the initial protest around uh, Friday prayers, it's, it's relatively peaceful in Dakar. Does it seem that our political system is too sluggish to uh, um, accomplish effective uh, you know, uh, leadership at a time when it is needed most, like a, a, a responsive kind of leadership that is effective? Well, this any time is good to discuss our, our government, I guess. And like everybody else around the world, we're seeing that the pandemic is showing up the gaps that we have in our systems and our processes. So yes, it does seem as if we are a bit too too sluggish. But in a way, we can't say that we're a behemoth because we're other countries that are much larger than we are and who are managing to do a lot better than we do in terms of just economic uh social and political environment in terms of building and developing more rapidly than we are. So I'm not sure that that's the right excuse. I think what we're seeing is that there's not enough thinking. There's a lot of reacting, uh, which might not be tied to the fact that we're a large country or a large government. It's just that we're not joined up in terms of how we collaborate. So 
was there before the presidential task force was set up? Was there a thinking between the president and all the state governors? Was there a meeting where they sat down and said, this is the best way to go forward? In terms of putting together the presidential task force, was there any thinking around beyond the politicians that we see on the task force? Was there any thinking about, oh, we need sociologists on this to help us with behavior? Or we need people who are communication experts? Or we need representatives of civil society? Or we need representatives? Because we know that the government doesn't have all the capacity that it needs to be able to respond. So for me, that's the biggest gap. Okay. That um, uh, let, let me just quickly interject. I'm told we have less than two minutes. Um, what should be the key concern beyond preventing the spread of the virus now? If you can do that in 30 seconds, we'll be very grateful. I think three things. Social welfare is what many people are doing around now. Giving out food, giving out money. Uh, the private sector citizens have jumped into that. But that's one. Two, security. We need to improve security. And so just listening to the earlier conversation, take the security away from harassing people on the roads and put them out there to make sure people are safe. The security actually should be helping to enforce and give masks and things like gloves and sanitizers, not jumping on people's cars. And then the third one is seizing the opportunity. We need more people to be demanding more, to be thinking more, and to be able to understand that we can't leave politics and governance long term to the type of people that we typically leave it to. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. All right.